Hello, folks. It's time for part two of our series parallel RLC circuit analysis. So let's begin with a nice circuit. Here we go. This is a, a little bit different than in the previous video where we had a basically a parallel network that had a, a voltage source here and then one of those branches was a uh, series network. So here it's kind of the flip of that. We have a voltage source and it's basically a series network where one of those sub pieces is a parallel network, All right? So we have an inductor that is in series with a parallel combination of resistor and capacitor. Now I've already inserted uh, some ammeters here to look at the different branch currents and the, and the source current, as well as um, a voltmeter to grab the inductor voltage and then a couple of measurements out here for the source and the capacitor resistor voltage. Okay, 10 volt peak source, one kilohertz. So our first goal is to find the reactance values for the inductor and capacitor. And once we have those, and we can find the total impedance, knowing the total impedance, we can then use the voltage source to find the source current. Once I know the source current, we could use Ohm's law to find this voltage on the inductor. And then we have some choices. We could, uh, for example, do a current divider to find the different currents between these. And knowing one of them, we could find the voltage. Because this is parallel, we know the voltage across the resistor has to be the same as the voltage across the cap. Or we could do a voltage divider. In other words, you have 10 volts. If we find this uh, impedance, which we would need to find anyway, if we're going to find Z total, right? If I have that impedance, put that over the total impedance, do a voltage divider with the source, and we can get this voltage. Knowing that voltage, then we can use Ohm's law to find the two branch currents. So, hey, I've already done that, okay? All right, so the, in, the uh, inductive reactance, J2 pi FL, I've thrown in um, the one kilohertz source, the one millihenry coil, and that gives us uh, just J6.28 ohms, 6.28 at uh, 90 degrees. For the cap, same deal, one kilohertz and 10 microfarads. That gives us 15.9 uh, at minus 90. And then this parallel combo, I'm just using the, um, you know, the conductance, susceptance, admittance sort of rule here, All right? You could use product sum rule, wouldn't make any difference, but that uh, pair works out to 8.47 at negative 32.1, which makes sense, right? It should be capacitive. So if we have a negative angle here and, um, you know, you figure you got 10 versus a, a J 15.9, that angle should be closer to zero rather than uh, minus 90, right? Because the, the resistor in parallel, smaller value, is going to dominate. Now that I have this, right, that's this combo, that's in series with X sub L. So we can take the X sub L at 6.28, take our 8.47 at negative 32, add those together, and this whole thing, this whole Z is 7.39 at an angle of 13.9. In other words, the uh, inductor dominates here, right? When we break this apart into its um, rectangular form, we will see that the uh, capacitive part of this is less than 6.28. So the inductor dominates and we have a positive angle over here. Now that I know that, as I said, we can use Ohm's law. Take your uh, source voltage, 10 volts at an angle of zero, divide by that impedance, and we get a total um, exiting current out of the source of 1.34 at an angle of 13.9 degrees, negative, right? And again, should be negative. This is a, an inductive circuit net at this frequency. You know, at some other frequency, it might be capacitive or more inductive. It all depends. But um, at this particular frequency, anyway, it is um, slightly inductive. So we do see a negative angle on the current, right? Current can't change instantaneously through an inductor. So the um, and the, the inductor current has to lag. And then we can find the voltage just using Ohm's law, right? IS times JXL, and we get 8.5 volts at 76 uh, degrees across that. Okay, um, we could find, now that I know the current, we could find the voltage across to RC. This is one way of doing it. Since I already knew this, um, this uh, impedance, this is Z of RC, we can just pass the current through there and we find this voltage is 11.47 at negative 46. And again, 
just as we found in the series case. Um, if you just add these two magnitudes, you know, which in our case uh, is going to be about 20 volts, if you just add the magnitudes, um, it looks like you're violating KVL, right? Like it's bigger than 10 volt source, but that's not the case because of the angles that we're dealing with, right? You got to remember this is eight and a half coming up at 76 degrees, and this is, um, you know, 11, roughly 11 and a half coming down at negative 46. So you combine those two things out, and the uh, vertical components uh, are basically going to cancel each other out, right? And you're going to and you're going to wind up with this uh, 10 volt at zero degree that we're using for the reference. In any case, continuing on, um, since I know the voltage across these two components, we can just use Ohm's law: voltage divided by resistance, voltage divided by capacitive reactance, and find the currents, right? So the inductor gets 1.147, negative 46. So this angle is the same as the current angle, because remember, current and voltage have to be in phase on a resistance. And then um, 0.72 at 44, because it's going to be 90 degrees out for the capacitor, right? Cap voltage can't change instantaneously, so the voltage has to be behind, right, negative, the uh, current, cap current, right? And that's going to be a 90 degree differential. Okay, let's see how good our calculations here are. So um, we can just come up to the analysis. Grab a straight uh, AC calculate node voltages. And let's see what we come up with. Okay, so coming down the list, there's our 10 volt source. Um, 1.35 at uh, negative 13.93. So we had 1.35 at negative 13.9. So that's just a round off, right? We're just carrying this to three digits. Um, looking at the inductor, 8.51 at 76.0. So we've got... Uh, 8.5 at uh, 76.1 versus 0.07. Again, just rounding off. And coming over to the uh, V of RC, 11.47 at negative 46, 11.46 at negative 46.01. Okay, again, just a little round off error. And uh, finally, we come down to the two currents, 1.15 at negative 46, 1.147 at negative 46. And uh, uh, 720 mils or 0.72, if you prefer, at uh, virtually 44 degrees. All right, so this matches up really nice to our calculation. All right, um, you might have noticed that I'm using um, the student version of Tina 12 here because, as we saw in some other videos, we have a phasor function. So, bring up our little phasor plot here. So, this has uh, the voltages and the currents. So the voltages are nice big values. This little mess in here is the currents, which I've uh, done a second time. We'll look at that separately. So let's see what we have. Right, here's our VS, 10 volts at angle of zero. The um, inductor voltage VL, 8.5 at 76. So there's our 8.5, right? There's a 10 up here. So that looks like about right. And uh, 76, that's pretty steep. And then the V of RC, right? 11.47, so that's coming way down here. And that's uh, negative 46, so nearly nearly a 45 degree angle, right? That's coming up just where it needs to be. And again, notice this is not a 90 degree angle because we have, you know, uh, an inductor versus a complex impedance. So this isn't zero, this isn't minus 90, this is, you know, in between. So we don't wind up with a nice 90 degree angle here. Okay, what about the currents? All right, so these big guys out here are the voltages we just looked at. Right in here is the currents. So our source current, 1.35, right? And we can see that's a small negative angle, right? Negative 13.9 right in here. And then we have the IC and the IR, right? The magnitudes, 0 0.72, 1 point, uh, virtually 1.15 on this. We can see this is down here at about minus 40, um, uh, about minus 46. And... Um, for the cap, 44. Well, this is 90 degrees. All right, when you go from uh, 44 to minus 46, that is 90 degrees. Because after all, when we look at this circuit, it's just a single resistor in parallel with a single current. They have the same voltage, right? So have to be in phase. The voltage and current have to be in phase for this, but they have to be 90 degrees out for the cap. So we see that. Now, if we had something more complicated where, you know, let's say the cap was in series with another resistor, then we wouldn't see that, okay? If I had another resistor in here, 
then this phase angle wouldn't be minus 90. You know, this impedance angle might be, you know, minus 80 or minus 13 or minus 22 and a half, you know, whatever the values work out to. And that would be reflected over here. Okay. It wouldn't be exactly 90 degrees out. It might be, you know, 47.2 degrees out, whatever it works out to. Okay. So that's basically how we, you know, uh, approach these kinds of problems. But we, we can see that this um, uh, phasor diagram works out just, just as expected. Okay. So if we have a bigger circuit, if there are more components in here, you know, series parallel, we just start repeating those rules. Find your series sub-circuits, find your parallel sub-circuits. You know, the rule for parallel is voltage has to be the same. The rule for uh, series, current's got to be the same. And we just sort of build out from there, right? Find the little things, redraw it, make a, uh, a simpler circuit, do it again, do it again, do it again. And eventually, you know, we're going to wind up with a series circuit or a parallel circuit. And then we can work our way through break down those pieces again, go into a finer and finer detail, and find all the equipment, um, voltages and currents, right? Across all the, and through all the individual components. It's got to work out. KVL and KCL have to work out. Just remember to do it in vector format. In other words, as we're doing it with the phasers. All right? Very good.